hello my wonderful people welcome to my platform anywhere you are watching this video from if you like what you are seeing please subscribe and also i want to appreciate youtube for this wonderful platform they created for us to use to disseminate information and i also want to put a disclaimer to my platform to all the content in this platform that we do not promote hate speech violence or misinformation we do not instigate any war or any violence we are here to educate the members of the public we react to all forms of videos i always stay there to watch the video together with my audience so that they will be informed so if you like it subscribe share and always leave your comment constructively in the comment section let us watch together the feeds the feed bill is there the poultry is there the farm is there the hatchery is there unfortunately we need massive amounts of soya bean and maize to be able to produce the feeds to feed the chicken to be able to get them to the slaughterhouse and so we try to encourage young people to go into farming. That has been particularly difficult, occasioned by issues of insecurity, lack of the initial capital, which led to the fact, which made me to set up the cross State Microfinance Bank, for which I injected 600 million. On that, for, that fund, in order for them to do recovery, was restricted to give loan only to civil servants who have a salary income from where they can do the recovery. So you get to the factory, which I'm going to demonstrate. A team of Egyptians have arrived in Nigeria today. They are in Calabar with me. By 11 o'clock, I'll be leaving Abuja for Calabar just to visit the poultry farm and perhaps take it over. The first person who started this project with me, uh, a Pakistani-American, uh, today is the biggest poultry farmer in Angola. So huge that Angola has stopped importation of chicken. There's a problem with our country and a problem with Nigeria. A good project, good dream, good everything, but social media criticism called politics destroys a very good intention. And I think we are very fine as a state that I, under my watch, I focus on the stomach, on human beings. And I think that nobody will dispute the fact that I'm the first governor perhaps in our history that will be leaving the state without owing salary or pension. All right, Professor Ayade, thank you for your comments. Now, talking about big dreams for the people of Cross River State, one of the big dreams that you had for the state and which you materialized in July of 2021 was the launch of Kali Air. In fact, your um, basis or perhaps justification, despite criticisms about whether or not a state should be involved in um, starting an airline, was that it was to boost the economic activities of Cross River State and that you had said that it was to manage the influx of people into your state, which is supposed to be a tourist destination, and how other airliners, aircraft owners had monopolized that. So you wanted to break that monopoly. You also said that you took no loan facilities to launch that airline and that it was the taxpayers' money of Cross River State that funded that project. I'd like you to please share with the taxpayers who are watching the progress of the airline. Has he been able to make profit? Where is it currently? What's happening with Kali Air? First, I think we should start with a congratulation that Cross River State, with the lowest allocation in the country, the highest debt profile in terms of local and foreign debt, among the top three most indebted states before I came in as governor, will have an airline and now also have an airport. Uh, that ambition is so huge, and I think I should start with that congratulatory message. Uh, I think it's critical. But importantly, Kali Air itself, we bought two aircrafts, uh, a 737-300, classic. We bought two aircrafts. Unfortunately, you need a minimum of three aircrafts to have an AOC. So we have no other option than to actually have our two aircrafts given to Aero Contractor, which is the only uh, uh, airline that has an MRO, which means it has a license to service Boeing aircraft in Nigeria. So we partnered with them with a long history of over 60 years without a crash. So we thought that in terms of safety records, maintenance, and um, what have you, they are the best company to partner with. So we partnered with them as the operators of Kali Air. And they were operating as Kali Air. Uh, within the same period, our hope was to be able to raise enough resources to be able to get a third aircraft and have an independent AOC so we can run on our own. Take the case of uh, Emirates. Emirates attracts a lot of food force into Dubai. But Emirates runs at a loss. Emirates gets subvention from their government. 
in spite of the huge traffic they bring in. But take away Emirates from Dubai, Dubai will die. And so the profit center is not really in the airline, but actually the densification of the food force that with its downstream assisted benefits occasioned by the fact that as they come in, they patronize the hotels, the restaurants, and create an activity and create an economy. And so the concept of Crossroads State being a tourism capital of Nigeria with a frustrating travel plan where sometimes you want to come to Crossroads two, three days. You know, its history is such a sad story. If you don't record it, you don't store it, you don't play it often, nobody remembers. Two, three days, you will not have a flight going to Calabar, lack of passengers. But today, you will queue and queue and queue to get to Calabar. How what change? Go and look at the amount of people who stay and lodge in crossover hotels today. It's on the rise. I remember one of the hotel owners, Azari, told me that look, those who don't know what we who are hotel owners in Calabar can tell you the difference by just our occupancy rate. And so Cali Air as it is today is under, uh, we're undergoing the process of concession because we need to concession it out. Working with Aero contractors have not been a very healthy experience because Aero became a property of Amcon, as it were. So all the monies they have made, they, it's supposedly with Amcon, we're struggling to get the money out of Amcon. They've not paid any money to Crossroads State. We also don't have so much money to be able to subsidize it. The principle, the policy trust, the direction is very clear. It is a commitment that I have made that we will continue to keep Cali Air flying. You just check the history of aviation, it's not really a profit center as it were, but it helps to create a secondary economy, which is the intent. And I think it's the right decision that we have taken. And I'm sure that cross will show you the difference, particularly at a time when going to Calabar was like your goal. It's a, it's, a, it's a punishment to travel to Calabar at, at 120 when the prices to other states were about maybe 50,000. So it was imperative that I did what I did, and I'm happy we did, and we didn't borrow money. The records are there. Just very quickly, Professor Ayade, and that's just your last point, yes. that you didn't borrow money. Would you consider this a judicious spend yes. of the taxpayers' money in Cross River State, bearing in mind the other projects that these funds could have been channeled to? How could I? How, 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 I have said it clearly that Kali increased the footfall into Cross River State. I've said that. And so how could I have, how could I, how could I have thought of an alternative? If people can come in and go out in a state that you say is the tourism capital, what happened? The traffic to Calabar and the traffic to every place else. Uh, Aero insisted that they wanted alternative routes. That's why they're flying to other routes and flying less to Calabar. So we reduced it to three times a week, obviously because they think that uh, the traffic to Calabar Will be, will it's not as commercial as the traffic to other places like Lagos, Kano, and what have you. And so we decided at a point in the Executive Council, where we said, should we just service Calabar because there's a social component of it, or we do as business? In the same Executive Council, we took a decision that the essence of Cali Air was to support cross areas. So we decided to run, run that route. And they said, look, because you are forcing us to run Cala, Cala, Calabar so frequently, we are unable to make money. Allow us the luxury of running other routes. And we eventually approved. And that's why today, you, you see Cali Air fly to other routes. OK. So a couple of fact check for you, Governor. At first, you said just now that Emirates is not making profit. That's not true. Only six days ago, Emirates made $2.9 billion in profit. Secondly, you said you did not collect loan. That's not true. There's a story on the 20th of February 2020 that says Ayade gets a note to secure a 35 billion loan in Cross River. And uh, this was where you went to the House of Assembly to secure a 35 billion loan from three commercial banks. All right. And thirdly, you talked about the fact that there was lack of soya beans for your uh, uh, project, your poultry project. Didn't you do your feasibility study enough to understand that there was going to be lack of soya beans that means to be able to power you know, the Kalas Chicken factory? That's number one question. Number two question will be, please tell me how the forty-five Wait, billion. Wait, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not jotting, I'm not jotting, I'm not jotting, I'm not jotting down. No, so no, no. This is the real question. The first respond. three were fact checked. Unless, unless, unless. No, Governor Yadi, the first three were fact checked. No, your fact check was wrong because because I did borrow, I did borrow thirty-five billion, and approval does not constitute uh, borrowing. If you okay. have an approval, just check 80% of what we have approved has never been paid. I didn't borrow money to buy this Cali Air, please. What's more, I okay. say it on authority and the God I serve, well, I did not. Okay. I did not. 
Okay. Don't and read newspapers. Come and I'll show you. Let me tell you how. I, let me wait. Wait. Let okay. me give you information on how I bought Kali Air. Lafarge was paying 270 million. Lafarge is the biggest cement factory in Calabar. They were paying 270 million, and I traveled to uh, France for a conference, and I saw that Lafarge was investing hugely on financing a conference that was. Uh, they spent 50 million, and I, 50 million dollars to just support a conference. When I came back, I said, look, if you can do this somewhere else, you're creating volcanic erosions, potential volcanic erosions in my state. You're digging out a lot of limestone, leaving all of these dangers. Because why can't you appreciate this small figure you pay? I negotiated something they couldn't get for 150 million to 2.8 billion. The first payment we made, we used it to pick salary. The second payment, we added money to it to be able to get the aircraft. Second, third payment, we did same. That's how we got the aircraft. The okay. records are there. Okay, okay governor, have, governor. If governor, it's approval, we get approvals, you don't get the funding. Okay, governor, I'm, I'm not saying you borrow to do Cali Air. I'm just talking about the fact that you said you didn't borrow and many, and, and many, all this and, while. Uh, governor, just, just hang on a minute. There was another one that you, you were seeking a loan request for for $10 billion from First Bank and Zenit Bank. It was around that time. But let's move on from all of that, governor. I've asked you two questions. Number one was, I don't know. Did, I, didn't wait, you? Wait, 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 didn't wait. you do? Wait, your, wait, wait. No, Go governor, Nigeria, please, Nigeria. Let me Nigeria. speak. Let me speak, please. Fis didn't you do your feasibility study enough to know that there was going to be scarcity of soya beans before you embarked on that project in the first place? Because you said, oh, there was no soya beans and all that. And secondly, I would like to know what has happened I, I, or what I, is I, happening I, to the forty-five billion for the Bakasi Stabilization Fund. Because there's nothing going on, and the people are impoverished in Bakasi. That's all I want to know. <laughs> which, 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 which one is the 45 billion Bakasi stabilization fund? There's no such fund. There's no such fund like 45 no, but, billion but stabilization government, fund for Bakasi. Your government. Where are you getting your statistics from? No, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute, Governor. Your <laughs> government alluded to the yes. fact that you have received 45 billion in Bakasi stabilization fund. When somebody erroneously said they were paying you 500 million dollars monthly, and you said no, it was 500 million naira. So, what has been done with that money for the Bakasi people in your state watching today? Your government said it, not me. You can check the okay. facts. They're there. First, first, there is no. Yes, let me come back to that. First, there is no such thing as 45 billion stabilization fund to, for Bakasi to cross the state. You can also do your fact check. Two, fact I check built a very outstanding things. housing estate. I have a very outstanding, fantastic estate that I built for the people of Bakasi and brought them in there. But I think with the NSAS, they are, it was destroyed. But essentially speaking, I would think my people will send you pictures. You go in there and see the fantastic estate that was built with the road network done, lighting, power generator, everything fixed, and did a massive ceremony. Commissioning ceremony was done by the Obong of Calabar. Got them a fantastic place to live. That's one thing I did. Now, Cross River State earns far less than our salaries in a month. We pay between 3.2 to 3.6 billion in a month. Our allocation after deductions of we are left with 900 million to 1.2 billion. 500 million that used to come monthly that has since stopped was a fund that helped to augment salary payment. And the records are there. And when you ask questions, you ask with open mind. You ask because if you have not received our own figures to compare with the figures of the critics that throw those documents to you, please, it would be better to also do so with a lot of uh, uh, righteous caution. Otherwise, you'll be pumping in figures that are wrong. For example, Ayade has never received 45 billion naira into my account as Bagassi settlement. Never, never. And here you are putting the figures in the public. <laughs> I'm sure you know somebody called Mr. Christian Ita, the special advisor of media to you. All right, he made this known in a statement available to newsmen yes. in Calabar. He said the money was a sum of 500 million naira monthly that accrued to the state in 91 months old administration of your government. And he said the money cumulatively was about 45 billion, 500 million naira monthly. This story was released on the 5th of November, 2022. And it was a reaction to somebody say you were receiving $500 million. But you just denied just now that you didn't receive 
Bakasi stabilization fund. And you're just you're getting you're just getting you're not listening you're not getting it's not Bakasi stabilization fund you're getting it all mixed up. I said the 500 million stabilization fund for the states that comes is used for augmentation and that has since stopped and that we earn 2.2 1.1 900 million to about 1.2 billion every month. We have a salary of 3.2 billion. Have you asked me where do you get money to pay for that difference? Have you asked that question? Ask me. Ask me. Answer to me how I am able to pay salaries up till this April that we are in. April is the other. I mean, April is the outstanding salary which I'm going to pay this week. Yade, have you asked me? Governor Yade, can we make progress? I want to ask you two questions. Twice this morning, yes, we have said that yeah. you lost the election. Uh, the senatorial election. You were defeated by Senator Jarigbe with close to about 60,000 votes. And, you know, we've said that in itself is an expression, <laughs> is an expression of uh, rejection by your own people after serving for eight years. Then secondly, you were quoted as having just said this week that, uh, you know, the consultation about the National Assembly leadership uh, was not romantic enough. What has romance got to do with the selection of leaders for the National Assembly? Just those two things. Unfortunately, you don't understand the sociology of English. Romantic means emotional conviction because the people who want to be the leader in the leadership of the Senate require it is their right. It is their inalienable right to seek to, to, to seek to become president or deputy Senate president of the Nigerian Senate. So if you have to tell them that the leadership of the party on whose platform they became, they became senators and that the leadership said they should step down, there should be some, some diplomacy, there should be some, a bit of emotional romance. And that is in the social application and that is elegance of English. It is the arrogance and the sarcasm of the extrapolation of how to use grammar. It does not mean a romance in the nativistic method that you think. So that is clear. On the state and cross the state, please, can you ask this question? Can you answer this question? In the history of cross River state, has there been a governor who has paid salary and pension to date the way I have? Did I meet an income equivalent to my salary? Have you asked me that differential, that cost differential, the projects I have done, like the garment factory, like the poultry factory that you are talking about, the chattery, the, all of those huge projects that I've started, I'm starting the commissioning this next week. Can you ask, how did I get that money? Again, on the record, when you say 500 million every month, that 500 million every month has nothing, it just adds to the salary payment. It just goes straight onto addition to this. And you still have a, a shortfall. You have to look for bridge financing. You have to bring intellectual money and all that to be able to sustain the salary regime for which we are committed to because the citizens come first before any infrastructure. In any case, I have five bridges. I have several dry carriage routes. In terms of the issue of the North Senatorial district, district election, I, I don't want it before the tribunal. I don't want to discuss the issue. But if I open into, if I open the gale of the, the militarization of the Northern Senatorial District, you will do. I come from Northern, Northern Senatorial District, where Catholicism is about 90%. The reality is that the people of the North, when you see me drive through, you see the amount of chair. We didn't have a proper election because the military took over the entire state. In fact, I, when I saw the amount of armored tanks, I just asked, asked myself whether we were in war whether there was something specific. Of course, we heard the security reports that they were going to bring in a lot of army to destabilize my senatorial district. This was communicated to the 13th Brigade Commander in my last Security Council meeting, that I hear that there's a lot of intent to bring a lot of army into my senatorial district. The election did not hold. The smallest local government area, which is number two, uh, sorry, the uh, Ogoja local government area, that had never brought votes compared to Yala, now was bringing thousands and thousands of votes but as you go for that, which I don't want to discuss, but you can see clearly that there was no election. It was simply the militarization and just cutting the polling units, driving people away and collecting results and announcing results. Go and check, we have a video we can give to you where somebody was saying, look, for my dear life, I have to feel what they want to feel. It's on video. 
where you have people inside the coalition center who are candidates for the election. And as a governor, I am seated in my house. But you have the other candidate moving from coalition center to coalition center with a team of people armed. It's, it's not something I want to discuss on TV, but you just ask you, and you use language that is not polite. Reject, uh, you defeated. In, in politics, they say one. You don't use defeated. You, you use language that doesn't suggest civilized communication. And in, in public speaking, the choice of language matters. It shows the level of elegance. It shows the level of education and scholarship of the soul. When you use words that are not intended to communicate uh, decency, it, it, it appears that you come with a mindset. And I think it's unacceptable language. Well, Governor Yadi, let me ask you a romantic question. Since uh, we are talking grammar this morning, <laughs> are you are you sitting now, down? Now that you understand the word romantic, <laughs> are you sitting down here talking to intelligent people? Are uh, you are telling us that the payment of salaries and pension is an achievement? Is that an achievement that you paid pension, you paid salaries? Oh my! Oh my! Oh, oh my God! Oh, oh my! Oh my God! Let me answer. You see, that's the innocence of where you sit. Salary and pension is a fantastic achievement in the circumstance today. And I tell you why. You see, you build a road, but you need the citizens to have their independent ease and their integrity to be able to walk on those roads. But what is the point of building a skyscraper when your people and citizens are poor? I'm a son of a civil servant. My father retired as a civil servant. So because of that, I am cautious, and I know the circumstance under which I, I, I was brought up. So I know that salary and pension is far more critical than any other project. The citizens of this country matter more than an attempt to show that we're a developing nation and building massive projects where your people are predominantly poor. And I can tell you, Cross River State ranks number one in terms of commitment to salary and pension, yet we're number 36 in terms of federal allocation. Let me tell you, I inherited, for example, the Obudukatu Ranch, 36 months salary debt, salary arrears. And I've cleared that. And you think that is not big news? You think Cross River State with the lowest allocation in the country, not owing salary, not owing pension, is not big news? Please go to other states and check states that earn far more than I do and owing seven, eight months salaries, even at their living office. You don't see it as an achievement? Then you don't focus on the people. Besides, I did not ignore infrastructure. In Calabar today, you can't enter Calabar unless you go through the Ayade dual carriage road that I've done. I call it Ayadi because it's done in my administration. From Calabar to Odupani, I've just done the dual carriage road. The superhighway, I'm commissioning the first phase of superhighway. The spaghetti flyover is due for commissioning. The Boki Bridge is due. The dual carriage road from Obudu to Bekwara up to Obaliku, completed, ready for commissioning. Of course, you have the Iyala, Ogoja. I can go on and on. I have the highest dual carriage road construction in the history of governors in Nigeria. Come and see. Right. Teachers Continuous Training Institute, the biggest in the whole of Africa, completed that is in operation. Yeah. And so, look, I, I am strategic. I, I know my circumstance. I know my history. Right. I know my people. If you come to Cross River State okay, today, okay, I'm a superhero. Superhero we ask, because we more questions to ask you have not asked, wait, you have not asked yourself. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Governor Yade, thank you. Now, talking about salaries and the achievement of paying salaries, the Trade Union Congress have actually disagreed with that, that it's not an achievement to pay workers' salaries. They've gone to work. It's their right to earn. So it's not an achievement. But just to say that they've also said that under your administration in eight years, civil servants have, have, have fared very poorly, that gratuities haven't been paid, also no promotion in seven years. I'd like you to address that. Then... On salary payments, just in April no. last month, um, uh, street sweepers were protesting in front of your office that they hadn't been paid. Was that resolved? Was that an issue? Because around this payment, pensions, gratuities, yes. and the like. So, sorry, I just want to, I have two questions for you. I'll just land just for you to respond to that question one. And then earlier this year, the former governor of Cross River State, um, Donald Duke, had said why, that. Don't, why, don't, why, don't I, why don't I take those questions? Because I don't have, I'm, I'm not recording anything. Right. So allow Please me to take ahead. those questions. Please go ahead. For example, the street sweepers. I met, I met street sweepers, I met street sweepers earning 5,000 naira a month. 300 people earning 5,000. I increased the number, increased their salary. But we paid through a contractor. 
When you pay a contractor, the contractor does not pay the street sweeper. You know, you have challenge. It's not the street sweeper salary is the least of it. You. They came to me. I wasn't in the state. I immediately I came back. I paid them, and then brought it down to one month and standing, which is the what we are going to pay. And when I tell you that we are going to pay, they are going to be paid. So the street sweepers thing was just politically motivated because I mean, for what I have done for them, for the amount of love I have shown to them, provide coverall. Increase what I pay to the contractors so that they can get more money. That has never happened. I did all of that. And how would you say? And then you're talking about salary payment, not a big issue. Salary payment is a big issue because what I earn is far less than the salary for the month. And how can you tell me I earn 900? And I'm saying it on public television between 900 and 1.2 billion, 2.2 max. And I have 3.6 billion to pay as monthly salary. This is minus gratuity. And you're not, you're not focusing on how are you paying for the difference? How, oh, that's, that should bother you. And again, maybe your question is intended for me to clear uh, certain doubts. But the statistics you read of Cross River State should please allow me the benefits of knowing clearly that civil servants in Cross River State will tell you that I have a very compassionate heart and that I place their interest more. In my entire regime, almost eight years, we had just about three strikes. Most of them, how can somebody say that I've not promoted? When I have issued promotion authorization up to, 20, uh, up to 2023. Promotion and effecting the implementation of the promotion, gradual implementation of the promotion, all done. And uh, it's unfortunate that the information you have is so different from the reality. Okay. If okay. Maybe it's governor. intended to just to. Okay. No. No. Governor. Uh, Gov governor. Governor. I. I think yes. you should cease from saying yes, yes, people yes. are intended to bring you down. No. We want the very best for Cross River State, like we want for every part in Nigeria. So you have to be open-minded. Take for instance, you said you've done a lot of projects, Governor, but none of your projects have worked. Kalas Chicken is not working today because you said there's no soya bean and all of that. You didn't do the feasibility study for that. Please let me finish, no, no, Governor. No, no, no. Let me finish. Would you let me finish? No. Kalas Chicken is not working. Kalas Vegas is not on stream. Kali Air isn't flying. Because even the airline, the planes that you give to air contractor are they airborne as we speak. So almost all of these big projects you're talking about are not working. And these are the expense of the people. People also complain about cronyism. Take, for instance, the sweeper contract. Can you please confirm for me, is that project given to your brother? That's another one. But most importantly, I would like to ask, what are you I can, I can, doing oh, as regards God. upgrading the unemployment rate in your state? Because you said you've done so much, but the unemployment numbers are still very, very abysmal. We have not seen your data. Your, un your unemployment statistics you have is as old as old school. Because I told you down that I've told my statistician general to give you the update you're driving that figure from the 2012 statistics. 2012. So again, in the whole of Cross River State, the projects you've mentioned, today, and you're going to watch me live, where you are going to see Kalachika working. Ask aero contractor and ask the schedule there, and you see that they are flying. So I don't know where you derive the information that these are not working. In any case, Kalachika works. And for the contract for sweeper's contract, they are over five different subcontractors. Over five different subcontractors. Those subcontractors earn far less. Don't forget, Cross River State is a state where nobody is paying one combo even for refuse collection. For refuse collection, you want a city to be clean. Calabar is the cleanest city, but you can never get somebody to accept to pay refuse, refuse levy. So we don't call it refuse levy. I gave refuse beans to the entire state when I came into office. Those refuse beans were converted into something else. You put those beans now of steel, those steels are broken, cut into slush, and sold as scrap metal, which led to the fact I had to scrap the scrap metal agency because we put beans to co for collection of refuse. Those beans are scrapped and sold as scrap metal. You put street light, those street lights are stricken, and, and I think it's a national issue. And that brings us to the fundamental issue where salary, pension, payment of people's due, it's an entitlement. 
It's actually not supposed to be an achievement. It has just become an achievement because the gap between what I earn and what I'm supposed to pay at a salary alone, the gap analysis shows that there is a deficit. There's a deficit. And that deficit, in addition to all the projects I'm struggling to carry on. Don't forget, I'm not doing roads. If you finish a road today, you can start driving on the road the following day. But if you build a factory, you need to train people, you need to employ people, you need to have NAPDAC approval, you need to do training, you need to do marketing. That investment itself is sometimes as huge as the project. So you need a concessionaire, you need a private sector participation. Government has a right to catalyze into existence a private sector. But government can build a factory, but government can run the factory. The toothpick factory is fully operational. The cocoa processing factory requires three billion naira in the minimum. These are big dreams of a state. You can't shy away from Thank you so much, my wonderful viewers, for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end. Like I said before, if you like what you see here, if you like what I do in this platform, as you have finished watching this video, please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when I upload a new video. Share my videos, leave your comments in the comment section constructively. Until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.